I think really the theme in my work is what has the city done? What is redevelopment? What has urban planning done? And what can it do given the constraints? My name is June Thomas and I'm a um, professor, actually the Centennial Professor um, at Taubman College at University of Michigan. For some time I've been looking at issues related to social equity and social justice in cities and in urban planning. So most of my work relates to that topic and uh, quite a bit of it relates as well to planning history and my subject is usually Detroit. What got you thinking about cities? I grew up in a small town in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And um, at that time, it was actually during the last vestiges of the Jim Crow era. Mm -hmm. And so uh, small town life was very oppressive. And uh, we experienced the full impact of that, including um, being barred from theaters and restaurants unless they were owned by blacks. And um, so when I was growing up, going to a city was a real treat because usually cities were islands of civilization, even in the South. And so um, we made at least a once a year trip to see my, parent, my grandparents in Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to New York when I was a child, several trips to Atlanta. And um, when I was a freshman or sophomore, I think I made my first trip to Chicago and I just fell in love with cities. I thought they were really wonderful places with more advantages than I had in my small town. A lot of your work now has been dealing with Detroit. What has been your kind of passion driving force in working there in that community? So I married into Detroit. Mm -hmm. I married a person from a big family who grew up in Detroit with um, many nieces and nephews and uh, one big passion was their lives and what kinds of lives they faced after the Detroit public school system. Um, my first um, singly authored book on Detroit, basically I was concerned because my niece was walking to school past fields that were barren and I couldn't figure out why because that was supposed to have been redeveloped. So that was really the driver, I think. Thinking about your new, your book that you're writing right now, The Mapping Detroit, Evolving Land Use Patterns and Connections, I'm wondering what your perspective is on the role of land use planning in, uh, in a field of planning that's kind of increasingly becoming about mixed use development and what is that role of, of land use? So I think the challenge in Detroit, which we actually began to address in the book with Margaret Dewar, The City After Abandonment, the challenge is actually what do you do when there is too much vacant land, when you have a problem of vacant houses and foreclosures, which are tearing down neighborhoods. So it's a different kind of a land problem. Right. It's not so much land use or mixed use as what do you do post abandonment? What do you do when the city has created such pockets of vacancy and abandonment? A lot of your work, it, it talks about uh, the minority planner. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a bigger issue that some of us, or at least I've been struggling with, is this idea of the word minority and how it might empower some, but then it also depends on who the speaker is, who's using that word. Well, I think language is really difficult um, and we've been struggling with several terms. Diversity is another term like that, that we yeah. struggle with. How do you actually deal with that? But I think um, the way I've started using it more is minority race and minority ethnicity. Okay. Because, um, for example, Hispanics are not one race and so you have to figure out how to talk about these things. I think my overall perspective is that there is only one human race. Really, there's no biological justification for what we think of as race, but we are stuck with cities and metropolitan areas where the social definition is quite clear. Right. And so we still have to talk about it, and we still have to talk about racial and ethnic diversity within the profession for um, very compelling reasons as well.
So I just think being genuine about how we're having those conversations and how we're using those terms. I think we were just talking about it being precise as to what we're talking about. It's not possible to be precise. (laughs) It's all convoluted. It's very difficult. I was wondering what you're thinking about the significance of narrative in planning and the planning process. Can you be more explicit? What do you mean? Um, you- I guess community narrative, the, the stories of people and how that informs our work as planners. Right. So I think narrative is just a window. Storytelling is a window to understand how people are really coping or feeling with the situation. Mm-hmm. So uh, several of us, for example, are at the moment, even this afternoon, interviewing people in some of the neighborhoods that are struggling to survive in the face of foreclosure crisis. And we ask them questions, but what we're really hearing is the story of their lives, the story mm-hmm. of their struggle, how they are trying to mow the lawns to make it appear that the empty houses are not empty and they're parking their cars. They're telling stories of their lives that help us to more deeply understand the situation they're facing, as well as some possible solutions. But I think before you can jump to solutions, you have to hear what people are feeling. You have to know how they're processing the environment that they're facing. Yeah. What do you think that the role of design plays in, in planning? Well, it all depends on circumstances. If you're... If you're talking about, <coughs> excuse me, a situation where um, design could help to improve the um, the way that people interact with the space, then of course you should look at design issues. Mm-hmm. There's an interesting book, for example, by Brent Ryan called Design After Decline, okay. where he talks about how design can be used even for cities that have experienced a large amount of vacancy. Um, But I think in general, we've been suffering from the effects of um, poor design at several levels, not just in cities, but in suburbs as well. And I'm wondering if that doesn't kind of affect our view of what cities are and what their potential is. So I think good design has a place. I wouldn't put it to the forefront. It doesn't leap ahead of certain considerations like good housing, good schools and those kinds of things, but Mm -hmm. I think in many circumstances you can actually use design to do things that help to improve people's lives. And as I'm speaking, I'm thinking particularly of the riverfront. Um, Sometimes um, a city or a metropolitan area can use its design, redesign of its riverfront Mm -hmm. as a way to kind of improve the lives of people in that place. Yeah. So I guess I would like you to tell us a little bit more about your role as the president of the Association for Collegiate Schools of Planning, kind of what your goals are for your term um, and how that organization works. It's really more prosaic than it sounds. I mean, it sounds very grand, (laughs) you know, president of the Association of Collegiate Schools of Planning. And it's appropriately long, so it's even more impressive because you got all those words done together. (laughs) But uh, really, it's a board position. It's a governing board position. But having said that, it really is possible to be sort of the bully pulpit for certain ideas. Mm -hmm. And um, I have several ideas. One that I'd like to build on kind of um, continues with some efforts of um, the previous president that I've been working on as well, and Mm -hmm. that is putting diversity at the heart of what schools are aiming for. And we're actually um, looking at the symposium as one way of kind of furthering that conversation. Right. And another is to look at um, improving the connections among the schools themselves so that we're not just competitive, isolated academic units, but we begin to look at ways that the different universities and their students can cooperate. Right. And I think we're definitely trying to do that as well with Agora and, and reach out to those other planning journals. So I guess I'd just like to finish with asking you what's next for you um, professionally and academically in your scholarly work. This work that we're doing in um, putting together this research project to look at neighborhoods in Detroit, Mm -hmm. I think it's a really good initiative because I think what we need to do is understand more about what um, people are actually doing to uh, kind of respond to this Um, to this wholesale collapse of the municipal service system as well as 
in some cases, the collapse of their neighborhoods. And so um, I'd like to continue that work. I have really good partners because Margie Dewar and Landing are both excellent um, fellow researchers. Um, so um, that, I think, is work that will take us some distance into the future. Mm -hmm.